last uh, last last June, I visit St. Petersburg first time. You know, it's my dream. I'm 55 years old. The first time visit St. Petersburg is great city. It's my dream. This city, St. Petersburg, between east and west, the culture is between. Some from Europe, from Italy, from Europe, some from East. I think so open. Fourth morning in the hotel, I jet light, no no sleep. In the morning, six o'clock, I I walking in the city, go to the Neva Neva River, Neva Bridge to look the Hermitage when the sunshine come. It's it's wonderful. It's amazing. That time I think this guy is making history. Again, this gave me so deep feeling. I think he he's amazing. The idea he he not for himself. This guy makes the some palace not for him, not for that moment. He give the people, give the country, give the. Wow, this is a big gift. John Wong for me, John Wong, is a very gifted and talented artist. And his deep involvement and his deep knowledge about Buddhism, the eight years that he spent in America, he recognized the importance of Chinese culture. And I think he actually started to look at Chinese culture in a very different ways when he was living in and in Beijing. When he returned to and to China, most of his work is about a bridge between the China, the East and West, and creating this um, di uh, cultural dialogue. He's a very demanding artist, as all the artists should be, but he has very high ethics, I think it's because of his Buddhism education and his love of and of Buddhism. He's one of the most interesting characters I've known in the art world because he has so many layers. Um, I first saw John Juan works in the uh, United States in the Asian Society in New York. I thought of him as a big and important Chinese artist who is developing his uh, very serious art. When I met him first uh, several years ago, I discovered a man who was very easygoing, very free, very open, very nice. But he is a monk living in the world. Uh, that is important to, to understand. So we're talking to the living monk who is spending his life in the world. And for me, this is important because I can understand more about Buddhism talking to him and more about life talking to a living monk. For John Wong, Hermitage is such a big uh, name uh, museum in the world. And there are many works in the collections he's learned when he was studying in, and in the academy. So it was his greatest honor to create the show. So he and Dimitri work on the show. I'm working in the Hermitage for more than 20 years, so I'm prepared to any changes possible because we depend on the mystery of this building. That is the Tsar's Palace, that is a huge collection, has his own ghosts, its own myth, its own principles. From the beginning, we had an ideal plan that everything has to be like, it should follow our plan. One day before shipping, Everything was prepared, everything was going ahead, and we received a phone call. Sorry, we are really sorry, but we have to cancel the shipping and we do not really know when and where uh, the exhibition would happen. Look, Pearl, are we going to ship or not? If we are going to ship, and if we can't go in, that means that we have to return back to China. What is your decision? And I said, let's ship. And then it was, uh, it was stored in Moscow. Before Hermitage was open, before the foreign office was open, and it was stored there until everything restarted. 
Jan Juan made new works during the pandemic, uh, works dealing with love, works dealing with the uh, feeling he got about the pandemic. And these works we decided to include into the exhibition to uh, that made the exhibition more rich. People is just talking about death. And the worst thing is not just about death because cities are locked in. If you're very sick, no one can come and see you. If you're old, if you're old and, and old people, you have children and the children really want, and our custom is, before you die, you want to have your whole family surrounded you. When you have a whole family surrounded you, your reincarnation will be much stronger. You could have that. You could not, and you never know when it's going to end. So there is this fear and how this, and in Buddhism, we always say that you have to take, you have to, you have to suck your fear away. But all the, the fear, the instability, the hesitation, that created love, this love series. Because at the end, what is remaining at life and death is love. What is love? What is lover? What is life? How short is life? So we have to think the love, the life, the death. Think about again. It turned out to be the first Hermitage exhibition about the pandemic and after the pandemic. We open the Hermitage, we reopen it after the pandemia with this exhibition. Contemporary art is about conceptual art. Conceptual art is about politics, society and philosophy. Okay, that's, that's really what's, what concept. But when I look at these art, I don't look at it as a political statement. If you know the Hermitage collection, you will see John Wong's recreation about that and that collection. If you know about philosophy, if you know about culture, when you look at Jesus Christ and his apostles, and when you look at Confucius with the student, you know that this is about East and West, the cultural differences, the cultural dialogue, and that is so, so important. Then when you look at this big ash painting, uh, the question is, how did he do it? I believe, I believe God, I believe Buddhas, I believe He's one God in the world. Just different name, different face, but one God. I believe we have another life. I believe we have another soul. Now I not, not worry. Always in the love, not worry.